Hi everyone. Uh, and for this lesson, we will focus more on the magnetic field. In the previous lessons, we focused on the gravitational field, the electric field, and the capacitance. Now I'm going to focus more on magnetic field. So for you have learned in your secondary school years that if you have a wire, uh, there will be a magnetic field that goes around like this. If you use a right hand grip rule, the magnetic field, the symbol for magnetic field is B, by the way. And um, the magnetic field strength uh, is the magnetic field pattern looks like this. So what I'm going to focus on today is to find the strength of that field uh, at that point. How strong is the field uh, at that point, which is a distance R away from the uh, wire itself. So there's this law which is called the Ampere's law. Ampere's law is a rather neat equation. Um, DL equals to mu naught I. Sorry, mistake over here is B dot DL. So it's a dot product of the B and the uh, DL, which is the distance of um, that the B you, you, that, that you apply over the integral, and equals to mu naught I, which is the current enclosed by the amparent loop. So the amparent loop is a fictitious loop that you create. Say, for example, this loop over here, this is what I call amparent loop. You can choose any shape. You can even choose it to be this shape. Now, like Gauss law, the reason why we choose this shape is because we know that the field due to the wire along this circle over here is uniform. So it will bring upon, upon some mathematical convenience I'll show you later. So this R over here is this, this is the radius of the circle. So because the B is constant, I can bring the B out. And the current enclosed is I. So therefore, the integral of DL, which is the integral of the length over here, isn't it 2 pi R? So you just get a very neat expression over here. It's a beautiful expression and it's very simple to get it through Ampere's law. I'm going to show you another typical application of Ampere's law, which is that for a coil, a very long coil. So the field pattern looks like this. If it is a very long coil, say for example the field goes like this, the amparent loop we're going to choose is this loop over here. Because the coil is so long, the field over here is going to be zero, and the B dot DL over here at these two ends over here is going to be zero. Why? Because dot product for field perpendicular to the loop over here, the integral, the path over here, is going to be equal to 90 degrees. The angle is 90 degrees. And B dot DL is B DL cos 90. So that's why the only part where there is a non-zero integral is this part, which is BL, if this is L which is equal to mu naught times ni. Now if you shift over, that will give you mu naught times n over L, which we call it the turns per unit length uh, times i. So this is the expression for the B field in the solenoid, in a very long solenoid, which is this that we usually would use for long solenoids. And that is for a wire. There is a problem though. Say for example, if we are going to talk about how about the field over here due to this current there's no way you can find an amparent loop where the field is constant it's just not possible so we have to fall back on something which is more general than the Ampere's law which is what we call the biot savats law now biot savats law states that uh, if you've got a random wire like this and uh, it has a I over here and you got a point over here say for example a point over here they want to find a B field due to this small section over here and this small section is DS length now this vector is what we call R vector and this is what we call the DS vector so there is a DS vector in the direction of the current this is the R vector from the segment that you're talking about to the uh, point that we have over here. So the small little field due to this small little length is given as 4 pi ds cross the r unit vector, r squared. r unit vector is a vector that's in this direction but has a length of 1. So magnitude wise, it will be ds times psi theta divided by r squared. So this will be the small field due to this small section of wire. So how does it apply to the situation that we talked about just now? You've got an I over here, you've got a section over here. Let's call this point D, and we've got the, this DX over here. And you've got a current going this way. So 
this field over here uh, this is your r vector this is your dx vector so the small field due to this small segment is equals to 4 pi dx uh, divided by r square and you got a sine theta where the theta is here so this is equals to mu naught i upon 4 pi 1 upon if you call this x this will be x square plus d square times the sine theta which is going to be equals to d upon x square plus d square square root dx now this will look very similar to what we have done for electric field if you remember the one we did for electric field so if you integrate this from minus infinity to infinity you'll find that it is mu naught i d upon 4 pi 1 upon x square plus d square to the power 3 upon 2 dx this will give you mu naught i d upon 4 pi x upon d square x square plus d square power half minus infinity infinity now when you substitute infinity into here into here x squared plus d squared is approximately x squared the same for minus infinity just that when you substitute minus infinity over here it'll be minus infinity rather than infinity over here so if you have infinity over here this is approximately x squared instead of x squared plus d squared you can put it as x squared x squared half to the power of half will be x so the x on top and below will cancel away and hence what you have over here will be mu naught i d upon 4 pi you got 1 upon d plus 1 upon d why plus because minus infinity minus minus infinity will become plus and therefore you will have mu naught i upon 2 pi d which is exactly the same that we got just now so this is to show that it actually leads to the same thing so why do we bother using this method because it still looks so long now there is a situation that i quoted just now that you can't solve using the apparent loop so say for example this one which is the one that we did just now so this point over here so say for example this is radius r this is at a distance d and um, like you to imagine that the current is going this way so let's imagine this section over here so this is the r vector the dx vector is the vector that goes in this way so if you were to take a look at the db which is mu naught i upon 4 pi ds cross r unit vector upon r square one thing you need to take note of is that this r square is a constant because at any point this distance to this distance is a constant which is actually d squared plus r square by the way this r square is this r not this radius r probably i'll need to put this as a vector uh, as a big r so that's the differentiate between the small r and the big r small r is distance from here to here big r is the radius of the loop but there is a, 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 a situation that you have to be very careful about. This is vector unit 1. This is ds. Magnitude is ds. And this is r squared. It seems that like we have taken care of everything. But you have to be very careful. When you do cross product, the, say for example the current is going in over here. Now if you take this vector, cross this vector, the B field that you get is actually perpendicular to your R vector. This is your DB. Now, if you were to sum up all this, can you see that it will be all these vectors that points almost like a cone. So the y, the y component of the db will cancel off. It's the, D, it's the x component that will sum up. So we have to be very careful that it is the x component of the field that sums up. And if we were to take a look at this angle theta, if you call this angle theta, um, this will be 90, this will be 90 minus theta and likewise this is 90 minus theta so if you want to find the x component it has to be cosine 90 minus theta which will become sine theta times uh, the sine theta will be equals to r divided by d squared plus r squared half ds all right so the, the the but the simple part of this is that this is x component nothing over here varies with ds 
everything is a constant. R is a constant, D is a constant, pi is a constant, I is a constant, mean everything is a constant. So what you need to do is when you integrate dbx, which is equals to bx, the x component field that points that way, um, you will get mu naught i upon 4 pi or divided by d squared plus r squared to the power of 3 upon 2 times 2 pi r, which is the ds integrated over a loop. So you will have 2 pi cancels off with this, it will be mu naught i r squared divided by 2 d squared plus r squared to the power of 3 upon 2. Alright, so this is um, basically the field due to a loop, uh, the x component of the field due to a single loop. Now other situations that you may need to know how to apply is, say for example, instead of a loop that goes to infinity, you may be asked to find a field due to a rectangular loop. So the field due to a rectangular loop is actually simp simply equals to 4 times the field due to a wire at this point. So if this is length L, 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 this will be L upon 2. Basically you're trying to find the field due to this wire of length L upon 2, L upon 2. The only thing you need to change is to change the limits of the integral from infinity to minus infinity to minus L upon 2 to L upon 2. So this is one situation that you need to know. The other, trick, the other trick that you may be exposed to is this. That certain situations result in very elegant cancellation. Say I want you to find a few over here. Take a look at this component. If I take this as dx, this is the r vector. This is the dx vector. The db for this section, the effect of this current in this point is equals to mu naught i upon 4 pi ds cross r vector r square. What's the angle between the dx vector and the r vector? It's 0 degrees. So if you put ds times r, which is 1, you need 1 over here, times sine theta, which is sine 0, this will become 0. So in a nutshell, the field due to a wire pointed directly at the point is 0. So therefore, the only section that creates a field is this point. So therefore, if we were to take dx over here, this is your r vector, this is the dx vector, the db due to this small section is equal to 4 pi ds cross r, r square, is equal to 4 pi r square, r square over here is constant because that's the radius, and is dx, which is the x the length over here. Uh, this is ds times 1 times sine 90. Why 90? Because this is always 90 degrees for a circle. So therefore, if you work this out, if you integrate db, integrate, this will give you b equals to mu naught i 4 pi r square times pi r because it's a semicircle. You cancel this, cancel this, cancel this, cancel this. This will give you mu naught i upon 4 r. So the same kind of method can be used if I were to have um, a wire that looks like this, like this, a sector of a circle, say for example, like this and this, two wires points towards and away, and this is angle theta. So the same method can be used, the field due to these two sections at this point is zero, the field over here can be worked out over here. Just that instead of pi r, you put it as pi, uh, sorry, r times theta. Then you get the expression for the field. So in summary, what I've shown you over here is how you can use Ampere's law, which is a very simple law that you can get for regular objects like the wire and the coil. In fact, that's more or less it. And but the bio servant law is a much more extensive law that can apply to any situation. Um, very complicated situation like a square, rectangular loop, um, a coil, which I showed you just now, and in this kind of situation, which Ampere's law cannot deal with. All right, the next topic that I'm going to go on to will be applying the field in electromagnetic induction system. So that's it for the lesson. Thank you.